Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Triopia, for your wonderful introduction. Um, I appreciate it. And I'm your great friend also. And everybody else's friend, too. Thank you for your welcome. Um, uh, as Triopi said, I've been working on African American history now for um, over 20 years. And in fact, I've written eight books since, uh, since it went up on the website. And there's a selection of the, the books that I've worked on. Um, three of them are on Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. And five of them are on the history of the Civil Rights Movement here in Arkansas. And that's what I specialize in. That's what I've been working on for over 20 years, the history of the Civil Rights Movement in Arkansas. And of course, Arkansas is well known across the world for events in the 1957 Little Rock School Crisis, which I've written on. But also, um, one of the most important bits of my work, and one of the things that I really focused and concentrated on, is the rest of the story of African American history in Arkansas, particularly in the 20th century. Uh, there's a lot more to African American history in Arkansas than just the history of the school crisis. And there are many fascinating, interesting people, stories, organizations, still yet to be explored. And I think one of the great things about Black History Month is that it gives us an opportunity not just to celebrate national leaders like Martin Luther King, but also look at our own communities and our own history of what's happening at a local level and a chance to explore those people who we don't know about, even in Arkansas, who were famous and made an impact in the wider world um, right from here. So uh, one of my latest books that came out just a couple of months ago, which is on the next slide, is uh, Race and Ethnicity in Arkansas. I have a copy here also to hold up. Uh, and of course, all these books are available on Amazon and all other good book retailers, I should point out. Um, but the latest book that came out is a collection of essays on race and ethnicity in Arkansas. Uh, I collected together a number of uh, other people's scholarship in this book that illustrate a lot of the uh, different paths that Arkansas has taken in terms of race and ethnicity. And also, one of the things that's exciting about this book, I think, is that it's not just about African American history, but there are essays on Latino history, there are essays on Asian American history, so it begins to chart a, a much more diverse history of Arkansas. And African American history and all those other ethnic histories, minority histories, are very much sidelined in Arkansas. Um, and uh, very much undeveloped, underdeveloped. So it's important that we do understand those histories, to understand not just what happened in the past, but who we are today and what made us who we are here in Arkansas. And one of the things I wanted to do this morning was to very briefly draw on one of the chapters from the book uh, to talk about someone who was from right here in Arkansas, who you probably never heard of before, but who made a big impact. And when I was asked to talk about Black History Month, my brief was to talk about black history, to try and tie it into uh, Arkansas history, to try and tie it into faith history. And I hope that I found someone who does all those things and more. In fact, one of the interesting things about the person I'm going to talk about is that I think I would claim him as a mosaic, uh, a mosaic from Arkansas in Arkansas, who was here many years before the idea or name of mosaic had ever been heard of. So the next slide will tell you about the person, Richard Nathaniel Hogan. And I have my... Uh, Cliff Notes here to talk from. But Hogan was a, uh, a Church of Christ minister who was born in 1902 in Blackton, Arkansas, out in the East Arkansas Delta. Um, in his biography in the Church of Christ churches, he's listed as a plumber and factory worker, minister and evangelist, like many African Americans, worked as well as preaching. He's described as one of the most influential preachers among African-American churches of Christ for most of the 20th century. And most notably, he was editor of the Christian Echo, which was the newsletter that went out to uh, African-American churches of Christ. And of course, he preached mostly through the age of segregation in the United States when churches were segregated uh, within the denominations uh, from 1950 to 1997. So he's a major voice within the church. Hogan's father died when he was just three years old. He was baptized at 10 and then sent to be trained as a preacher over in Tennessee under the tutelage of George Philip Bowser. George Philip Bowser, who was um, a well-known evangelist at the time. He toured the revivals with Bowser. Within a few years, had baptized over 70 people as a 14-year-old, getting the nickname of the boy evangelist. He was a prolific evangelist, uh, began full-time preaching in Muskogee, Oklahoma in 1932, and at one meeting, reputedly in 1934, in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, 
Um, in a single revival meeting, he baptized 189 people, including five preachers from different denominations. That's pretty prolific. Um, in 1938, he moved to California and established a church there on Compton Avenue in Los Angeles, which evolved into the Figueroa Church of Christ in 1953, uh, where he was a minister until his death in 1997. While there, Hogan founded the Nigerian Foundation to assist Nigerian students complete their education in the United States. He established the Ethiopia Relief Fund, which for a number of years sent $1,500 a month to help feed the hungry in that country. Uh, he found, helped to found two preaching colleges, one in Southwestern Christian College in Terrell, Texas, and in 1971, the Los Angeles School of Preaching. Quite a life and quite an achievement, I think, for a young African-American uh, boy coming from Blackton, Arkansas, in the early 1900s. And I want to read uh, a few of his editorials, a few excerpts, and I should point out, I forgot to do this at the beginning, that um, the uh, essay in the book is written by my good friend and colleague, Dr. Barclay Key, uh, who's working on a larger history of the Churches of Christ, so I'm borrowing from his work uh, to pull in this preacher. Um, but a few things I wanted to read from the Christian Echo that, um, that uh, Hogan wrote, which I think confirm him as a mosaic, and they're kind of fascinating to look back and think that over 50 years ago, there were preachers who were writing these things and talking about these things that we talk about still today in mosaic. So in 1959, Hogan wrote, The fact that Negroes are not allowed in these segregated churches and schools is proof that God is not there. For where God is, no man is barred because of the color of his skin. Brethren, you may fall out with me because of this article, but you know that I am telling the truth, and those guilty will do well to repent. And Hogan never belonged to a formal civil rights organization. He's not active in the movement as such. Most of his writing about against segregation and against discrimination in the church came from his own Christian background and his own scriptural authority. So this came from within, from the, within the church and from within his own heart. On another occasion, he wrote, There is no such thing in the Bible as a white church of Christ and a colored church of Christ. I hope the time will come soon where my brethren will not allow the sign Church of Christ Colored to be erected on their buildings. For God has no church of Christ colored. Neither does he have a church of Christ white. Prejudice, hate, and segregation have no place in the true church of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Finally, a last uh, quote from, uh, that, that he wrote. Uh, in 1960, he said, I sincerely pray that my brethren both white and colored, will soon rid their hearts of hate, prejudice, and pride and be satisfied with being simple New Testament Christians. For regardless of the color of the skin, we are in the same kingdom, subject to the same king. Let's stop referring to other races as your brethren and to our race as my brethren. Regardless of race, if we are in Christ, we are all brethren. So Hogan, I think, provides a fascinating example of one of those African-Americans from history, who, one of those African-Americans African -Americans from Arkansas right here in our own state, who made a big national impact who we still don't know about. Probably most of you never heard of him before. Uh, but also fascinating to me, I think, is that he's a mosaic before his time. The things he was saying in the 1950s and 1960s very much chime with what we talk about today. And one of the things I was thinking about yesterday as I was looking at this and writing this is that I'm glad and grateful to be in a church where we can say those things and where those things don't seem so awkward. Although, at the same time, I also thought how many churches uh, today, at this time, in Arkansas, uh, would reading those things feel quite awkward and how much shuffling of feet that would lead to and how much awkward stirring around at one another that would lead to. So I'm very grateful that I can read these things in comfort here and that the vision of people like Hogan uh, are very much still alive and kept alive in churches like Mosaic still today. So that's a person I commend to you for Black History Month in a short segment. And if you want to find out more, of course, I can recommend many good books that you can go to to find out a lot more about black history in Arkansas. Thank you very much.